Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in DayZ. My previous guide I think was like 3 or even 4 years ago. So I did an update guide for Windows and after that we're going to show the uh, in-game setting inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year, it's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now for the in-game settings of DayZ, first of all, for the quality, just go with custom because we're going to change everything under hit. Uh, for the display mode, super important to play full screen. Don't use the other mode. You will have some stuttering, lags, and stuff like that, and also drop in your FPS. So super important to use the full screen. After that, you have the resolution. Just play native. Uh, you don't want to downscale your resolution here. Uh, you will 
it, it will not be good except if you're using something li like the image killer from nvidia or the super resolution from radian but make sure that you're playing native the uh resolution of your monitor for the v-sync in this game i recommend to disable it first of all if you have free sync and g-sync you need to disable it but also i'm not a huge fan if you don't have it in this game it's causing me a lot of issue on my even on my laptop i'm getting some weird stuttering with the v-sync and also uh, a big amount of input lag so not a huge fan of v-sync in this game so disable this for the object detail you have a lot of different options as you can see um if you're playing on a really like old laptop with an integrate gpu for sure you need to go with poor but honestly low and medium are not that bad so if if i compare poor to low you have two percent difference in fps if you're going low to medium it's another two percent so it's four percent difference if you're comparing medium to low but when you go to high and extreme now you are gonna lose a lot more fps so that's why i recommend something like medium or low if you're playing on a mid-range computer or something like old it, but if you're playing on a really really old computer with an integrated gpu and stuff like that just go with poor it's pretty much the same thing with Terran Detail. I recommend something like Medium. Start with Medium. Look at your FPS. If it's fine, just stay at with Medium. Don't go too crazy. I in Extreme, you're losing a lot of FPS with them. Uh, if you're playing with a null, I don't know, like a 960, probably you will need to go with low with Terran Detail. But if you're playing on a very, very, again, old computer, go with poor. For the texture detail, uh, if you have 6 gig of VRAM and more, go with extreme. If you have uh, 4 gig, go with high, 3 gig medium, 2 gig low. And if you have less than 2 gig, go with poor for your texture detail. After that, you have the shadow detail. This one will provide you the most of FPS. If I compare poor to extreme, you have like 22% difference in your FPS. So honestly, for me, it's not an important thing. The um, shadows in this game, just go with poor and you will gain a lot of FPS. And also, if you're not, you just need like 10 or 12 of FPS when you're playing this game, just start with shadow detail, put it at poor and look at your result first. For the texture filtering, you have three different uh, brackets, as you can see. I recommend to go with I if you can do extreme or I. If you are at medium, go with medium. If you're low, stay at medium. And if you're going at poor, go with low with the texture filtering. For the te Terran surface detail, I recommend something like low or medium depending on your computer after that you're gonna lose a couple of fps more so low honestly i don't see a big difference in my image quality between low and medium and you can gain like two percent in your fps so definitely just go with low and look at it if you don't like that you can go a little bit higher for the post process anti-aliasing in the hardware aliasing normally i recommend to go with disable you will gain a nice 10 percent boost on your fps but if you don't like the aliasing as you can see over there you can use the uh, post-process aliasing at medium. You will have a nice like FXAA with better quality. If you have like a very old computer and you still you have some issue when you're trying to run FXAA even in other game because it's not like a um, it, it doesn't take a lot of resources to run FXAA. You can definitely go with low. And if you don't like it, just don't use it. Disable it. You will gain a lot of FPS. Hardware anti-aliasing, it's more like if you have a more recent computer, it's MSAA. I don't recommend that if you have like old computer or a bad computer. Uh, but you have, if you have something decent, you can definitely run something like medium. It, you can run it easily. Ambient inclusion, I recommend to disable it to have the most of FPS. But I know a lot of people don't like it because the game looked flat. So if you compare extreme to disable, as you can see, it looks flat. So definitely you can test something like low. You will lose like 3% in your FPS, but still it will look better uh, and less flat when you're playing the game. The last one is the post-process quality. You have three different options. I recommend to, to use low. You will gain 5% in your FPS. And also uh, the game looks a little bit blurry with post-processing quality at medium or even high in this game. So I'm not a huge fan of it. So just disable it. It will help you with your visibility. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my uh, daisy guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.